Welcome everybody, welcome back to Homestead Heart. And today we are in the kitchen and we are getting ready to can some diced tomatoes. Okay, y'all stay tuned. to go for my diced tomatoes. Y'all saw me unbox my beautiful new water bath canner. It's a water bath steam canner, but I'm just water bath and I'm not steaming, okay? Now, I have my canner on the stove. My fire is on low because that water will need to be warm, okay? As I get it into the, get my jars in, that water cannot be cold. So I got the fire on on low. I got my tomatoes right here. These are paste tomatoes, and we're going to talk about them in a second. I got my pot on to blanch my tomatoes because you know you got to, in order to get the skins off, you want to go ahead and drop them in some hot water. I got my ice bath right here, and I got my jars ready, set to go. You're also going to need some lemon juice, okay? And if you like, some basil. Now, I am going to be using dried basil. If I had some fresh basil, I would be dropping a few leaves of fresh basil down in each jar with a tablespoon of this lemon juice, okay? So, what we're gonna talk about now is these tomatoes. What I'm using today is a paste tomato. Whatever kind of paste tomatoes you wanna use or if you don't want to use paste tomatoes, you want to use a slicing tomato. Whatever kind of tomatoes you have, you can do this, okay? But I have here paste tomatoes. So if you have paste tomatoes, Amish paste, San Marzano, Roma tomatoes, whichever paste you like, use it, okay? Now they do have a lower water content than your slicers, okay? But that's why these are so perfect for what we're about to do today. So y'all, let's go ahead and get to this. All right, y'all, so now to go ahead and get started, we have our tomatoes, lemon juice, salt, jars. We have our boiling water here because we do have to drop these babies in some water before we dip them in the cold water bath to peel off all of the skins, all right? Now, what I forgot to do was get a bowl to put these tomatoes in once I get the skins off of them. I got to do that too. Now. I got my canner here, and my canner, the fire is on, but it's on low, okay? My lids are sitting there in some warm water, and I got some hot water here to fill my jars with. So I'm ready, set to go, except for that bowl I need. So I could use this one. Yeah, I could use this one. All right, so y'all, let's go ahead and get these babies dropped into some hot water. I got seven of them right here. And I just dip these in and I put a one minute timer on these. And if you notice, I don't score my tomato. I don't cut them because once I core them out, where are my little cores at? Once I core them out, wherever I have cored them from, the skins are gonna peel right off anyhow. And plus they're gonna crack on their own. I don't need to score them. That's just extra work that I don't do. So let's go ahead and get these in the hot water. I put these babies on a one minute timer, okay? And then I sit that to the side and while I'm waiting, I have my measuring spoons here for my salt and my lemon juice. It's one tablespoon of lemon juice per pint, two tablespoons of lemon juice per quart. That's just to raise the acidity level for water bath canning, okay? We're gonna make sure that these babies are safe to eat, okay? So the lemon juice, you need it. Can you use fresh lemons? Please don't. The acidity level in fresh lemons vary tremendously, all right? And we don't wanna take that chance. And I also have my uh, half teaspoon here because I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of the pink Himalayan salt 
to each one of my jars as well. So let's get this party started. <laughs> All right, that timer has gone off for the first minute. I'm going to scoop these babies right on up out of here, all seven of them. Then I'm going to drop them in the hot, cold water, I mean. I'm going to grab seven more. Drop these in the hot water. Y'all, I have to start a timer because if I don't, I will absolutely forget that it's been like a minute. I'll be like, has it been a minute? <laughs> All right, my water bath and canner holds eight pints. So I'm gonna go ahead right now and get the lemon juice added to each one of these jars while I'm waiting. Hopefully y'all can see that. All right, there's my tablespoon of lemon juice per jar. I'm down to 10 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead now and dip these babies out of the cold water and drop them in my jar right there, my little bowl. Now, while those are sitting there, I'm gonna show you real quick. See how I did not score these tomatoes and you see how the skin is coming off by itself? So I just think the scoring part is just a little, it's something I really don't have to do with these tomatoes right here, okay? Then I just use my little thing and pull out the core. So super easy, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get these out of that hot water. And get them in the cold water. And I'm just gonna keep repeating this process until these are all done. And I do each step one by one. I'm not gonna move on to anything else until all of this is done. So I'm just gonna sit that back right there and we'll move on to the next step here in a minute. Okay, y'all, so what I have done is all of the tomatoes that have been blanched, dropped in ice water, I've moved them over here to the insert that goes into that roaster that my mama gave me. My, my mama roast. <laughs> and I put them over here, and because I do them all at once, I'm not gonna do this, this, and be trying to core all at the same time. I do these step by step, okay? So I'm gonna do this step first. You know, it keeps me sane. I'm gonna do this step first, and then put them all in here, then I'm gonna come back and do this step. So now that's my timer. I'm gonna go ahead now, because I let these sit in the cold water bath for the amount of time that those are in the hot water bath. And then I take them out before I put in the next bag, because I don't wanna heat up my water by having all these tomatoes in there. So I'm taking them out, okay? And then I'm gonna grab these out of the hot water like so, drop them in the cold water, grab my next set, and I do it this way because I'm not gonna risk hot water splashing on my hands, plus I can lower all of these in the water at the same time. Then I start my time. Now this is very efficient for me. But while I'm giving them a minute, I got my salt here. I'm gonna go ahead and get my half a teaspoon of salt added to each one of my jars. Quick process, y'all, really. Sit that to the side, sit my salt to the side because I have a ton of more tomatoes to do, trust me. I got my thanks for joining the party bowl. <laughs> All 
All right, go ahead and get these out of that cold water bath. That's what I'm going to do. The grandbabies are back, but not for long. They're gonna lip us. All right, take these out the hot water. And get these in my cold water bath. And get the next seven down in the pot. And I'm going to start a one minute timer again. That's how simple that part is. So once I get all of them blanched like this, I bring y'all back and we're gonna move on to the next step. And I'm just giving these a toss around in the water. You know, I wanna get that heat off of them. All I got is a minute over there. So I'm getting this heat off of them. Now, I'm gonna show y'all something here. I got tomatoes here where the skin did not crack on it, okay? See it? Trust me, don't put this back in the hot water because we didn't score this, but the skin has been loosened. And I'm gonna show you, once I put this in and core this, look at it, it's already coming off. Look, just look. Hold on, let me move the core out of the way. See how that skin come right on off? And then you just peel the rest of it right on off of there. See? No scoring necessary. I need to take the rest of that core out of there. But no scoring necessary. Okay? See there. Beautiful tomato. Don't put it back in there. Because you don't want these tomatoes to be all mushy. Right? So, but anyway, with the core, I just take it and kind of work my way around the core with it. Just like that. Because it has those serrated edges on it. Okay, so this is what I'm using here. And I'm just working my way around with the core. It pops right out. Boom. Looks a little dark. All right, so I have already started with coring and peeling the tomatoes to get a lot of them out of the way while I let the phone charge. <laughs> so I've already gotten quite a few done and quite a few skins here. Now listen, these skins, I'm gonna do something awesome with these. So. We'll get into that in another video, but don't throw them away. You can dehydrate these skins, okay? And make a wonderful tomato powder, all right? But that's gonna be for another day. I'm not throwing these away, mm -mm. Now I'm gonna go ahead now and get the skin, get these cored and peeled, all right? Now, and you see how easy the skins just, they come right off, okay? Now, if you run across a tomato that the skin doesn't come off quite as easy what you want to do is remember that once you do so many batches in your water put your lid on crank that fire up to high and bring that baby back up to a boil okay all right okay so get these cord and peeled now this is what I mean right here. See how this one is not coming off so easy? I could tell that this one actually was a part of that last batch that I did because the water had cooled down quite a bit. So it's not coming off quite as easy, okay? So I didn't do this because I wasn't thinking about it, but I should have let that water come back up to a boil. The skin is still gonna peel off, it's just not, it doesn't have that slip off, okay? So. I'm just going to go ahead and peel that on off of there. Yeah, it'll come off still, but I should have brought my water back up to a boil. Because once that water cools down, whether you score the tomatoes or not, the skins are not going to slip off if that water's not hot enough, okay? All right? All right, that's that. And then you can always tell... <laughs> when the water was hot enough, you see? Because it slips right off. Yeah. Oh, so now if you're canning with me, come on, let's get these skins off of here. We still got a little ways to go.
All right, y'all. I am done. That was my last tomato. Now, I am going to clean up this mess, give my hands a rinse, and then we're gonna start dicing these babies and getting them in the jars, okay? That's next steps. All right, y'all. Now, we have them all skinned and cored, right? So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna start cutting these babies up. Now, what I do is I slice it in half, okay? Then I'm going to cut, just slice, chop, chop. That's it. Once down the middle, one, two, depending on the size of the tomato, right? And that's it. This is what I got right here. And then, y'all, this is a raw pack. So these are going directly into the jar, okay? I got my water over here heating up. By the time I finish, all of this ought to be boiled, right? I mean, the water ought to be boiling, okay? The water ought to be boiling because we are going to put hot water in these jars. My canner over there is already heated up. So it'll be ready to receive these hot jars because we are going to put hot jars in side of a hot can, okay? I don't know how many pounds of tomatoes this is. But we're gonna fill these jars all the way up, okay? All right, I'm gonna mash that down in there a bit. All right, look like I might be able to get another tomato in there. Or maybe a half of one. All right, y'all. So yeah, I'm just pressing it down lightly. I'm not jamming it down. I'm just pressing it down lightly, okay? Now, this is what that looks like, okay? This is my diced tomato. All right. Cut that bit in half and just keep that going. And this is called raw packing, okay? And y'all know me, I'm more than likely, I'm, I prefer to raw pack as much as I can because it just makes it easier. When, you, when you're trying to can a ton of things, then raw packing just seems to me to be easier for me to do, depending on what it is. Some things like chicken, I will raw pack chicken, but I will also saute it because I do have different uses for different kinds of um, chicken, right? Even the ground turkey, you can cook that up lightly or you can raw pack it, either one, whichever you prefer. But with these tomatoes, do it like this. It just makes it a little easy. Remember, we're leaving a one inch head space on these, okay? Just dropping them in, pressing them in lightly. Boom, that's it. Then I'm gonna grab another jar. Two, actually. <laughs> it's cloudy outside. That's why it's so dark in here almost. It's cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Cloudy with a what? With a chance of meatballs. With a chance of meatballs. <laughs> a chance of meatballs.
go ahead now and funnel in. This water is hot. So yes, I'm funneling in some hot water here. I'm gonna give that an opportunity to settle down to the bottom. I'm gonna just keep moving. Cause it is gonna take a minute for it to settle. Okay? Cause I'm gonna have to use my debubbler to move these things around a bit. All right. Grab my debubbler. I'm just gonna go around the rim of the jar. Well, you know what? It don't look like it because my tomatoes had water and water in them already, some liquid. Of course, with that lemon juice too. I'm gonna go to each one, move everything around. And that's just gonna release any air pockets that may be sitting here in this jar. Oh yeah. I guess I won't need to add any more liquid. <laughs> It don't look like I'm going to need to. Make sure I'm moving it around pretty good to release any air pockets. That's all. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a head spacing tool and you're new to canning, feel free to use that head spacing tool to make sure, okay? Now this piece is sticking up a little bit too high. Just gonna take it over here, I got room right there. Now I am going to take my paper towel again and go around the rims again because I did jump ahead a step. I didn't add my liquid, so I jumped ahead a step, so that's okay. I'll just go back and do it again. It only takes a second. Okay, almost done. All right, now that I've completed that step, I'm gonna grab my handy dandy lid magnet. I got my lids back here sitting in some warm water and I'm gonna go ahead and get each one, get a lid. What's wrong with this here, here lid? Y'all look at this, brand new. That's why you gotta look at these lids. Y'all see that it's all chewed up right there like something been chewing on it. I can't use that. Uh, 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 let me move that out of the way. Shame on them. We don't crank down on these, okay? We do this fingertip tight. Hey, grandbaby. Hey. <laughs> all right, y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these on fingertip tight. And then we are going to get them moved to the water bath pan. Easy peasy. How does that look, you all? Yeah. Let's get these babies in the can. All right, y'all. So, now, I'm getting these jars down in this rack here. The rack just kind of sits on top right there, just like that. I'm getting them all in the canner. And again, this canner holds eight pints, I believe. At least that's what it said. We about to find out. I don't know, y'all. I think that box. I don't think that box is right. I think this thing will hold nine. I could get one in the middle. Hold up. Yeah. All right. So I quickly, quickly went and did another pint. And maybe it's saying seven because it won't sit up completely in the center of this rack. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, maybe it said eight instead of nine. But I went ahead and popped that ninth one down in there anyway. So now I'm going to lower this rack into the bottom. Okay, y'all. So as I was saying, <laughs> I got to do 
better about putting these phones on the charger. So as you can see, it did move over a little bit, but I'm gonna put it right back in the center. I don't think it's gonna make it. I don't know, we'll see. That's probably why they, why they said that, because the paint won't stand up on its own. Y'all know I'm gonna try it on. So in any case, y'all, I got the, gonna go ahead and crank this up to high, high heat. And as you can see, like I said, this water is at least an inch above the top part of that jar. Now, put that right there and see. Oh yeah, that's, that's plenty. That is exactly just about an inch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can gauge it for yourself, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the lid on this because we need to bring this to a boil. And we don't start the timer on this until it comes to a rolling boil, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you back here in just a minute to show you what this looks like when you can start your timer and how long to process these pints for, okay? All right, y'all, stay tuned. All right, y'all, this water is now boiling and it's a rolling boil and I'm sure you can see that through the lid, but I'm gonna give you a, a sneak peek so you can see, see that? That's what you want right there. You want that water to be at a rolling boil like that, okay? Now, these are pint-sized jars. So we're going to process pints for 40 minutes. If you were doing quarts, it would be 45 minutes, okay? So, so far, I like my new water bath canner so far. And even that one little jar that I put in the middle that I thought would tip over, it's standing up straight still. So I got nine pints in here, all right? So in about 35 minutes or so, we'll be back. We're gonna turn the fire off of this. Now listen, I'm gonna turn the fire off of this after the timer has gone off, and I'm going to remove the lid, okay? And I'm gonna show you that, because if for all my newbies, you always wanna open that lid away from you so you don't get that steam in your face, that stuff will tear your skin up, okay? So we're going to do that when we come back here in just a moment. All right, you all, it is time to get them out of the canner, okay? They have been in there for about eight minutes or so because I wanted to finish getting my other jars done so I can get them in. So they have been in here for about eight minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pull them out. And last one. All right, y'all, that's it. All of my tomatoes are out of the canner. And yes, we got a little bit of float action going on, but that's okay. It's no big deal. Sometimes it happens when you raw pack an item, okay? So it's going to be perfectly fine. I'm not worried about my tomatoes at all, but they look absolutely beautiful in the jars. Yes, they do. Excuse me, grandbabies. Do we run in the house? Oh, Jackson took something from y'all. Put it down, Jax. Drop it. Okay, as I was saying. <laughs> oh my god. As I was saying, you all. This is the tomatoes right here. And I'm proud of them. And we're gonna go over what I would use these for. Okay? All right, y'all. All right, y'all. So that's the tomatoes my granddaughter was playing with her little dollhouse and jackson snatched her toy and took off the running and they all went to chasing him to try to take the toy wasn't successful you just have to tell him to drop it yeah he'll drop it maybe <laughs> anyway that's going to do it y'all i am so happy about my tomatoes my tomatoes that i have in the jar I use them to add two other food items. So whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's soup, tomatoes, or if I just want to open up some and make some salsa from just plain tomatoes, I can do that. Or if I want to put them as a topping on burritos, nachos, tacos, something like that, then I have my canned tomatoes that I can do that with, right? So that's why they're just plain diced tomatoes. So. And, you, and I wouldn't do these in quarts. Not me. I mean, you can if you want. But 
for our family, I wouldn't use a quart of diced tomatoes. Even if I wanted to make a batch of chili, I would just open up a couple of these, right? Yeah, I would just open up a couple of them, but I really wouldn't need a whole quart. So the pints are best for us, okay? But you have to do what's best for you and yours because you, your family may be larger where you need a whole quart, okay? So just do what you feel is best. All right, y'all, that is going to do it today. I got another batch of tomatoes to get in the canner. Now, I got these tomatoes sitting in a pot with some hot water to keep them hot because they're getting ready to go into a hot can. So I got them sitting in a pot of hot water because they're getting ready to go in. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for today. If you like the video, like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video that we upload to our channel. Yeah, yo. Thank you for watching Homestead Heart. <laughs> Peace and blessings to each and every one of you and we'll see you in the next video. Wait, wait, what's yeah, yeah. the video for home? Yeah, yeah.